Hello, this is a breakdown of the events that led to the Federation Klingon War of 2405 to 2410, known as the Third Klingon War. It was preceded by the Klingon Gorn War and the result of many political and military events alongside the manipulations of third parties. The build up is all interconnected and I have created several videos already on the history of different powers and factors, but this one is about the general turmoil between the UFP and the Empire. That being said, the trouble began with Romulans. In 2382 the Klingon Empire invaded Kitama and took it back from the Romulan Star Empire since their brutal occupation for the last 36 years. The Federation in response considered imposing a censure on the Klingon Empire for its actions, but decided not to. However the very notion was seen as an insult by the Klingons, who expected the UFP to be in its corner after the camaraderie built up during the Dominion War, and it withdraws Federation diplomats from UFP space. In 2384 the IKS Kuv is attacked by Gorn, 207 Klingons die. King Zrathis of the Gorn denounces the attack as rogues, but also refuses to hand over the surviving crew of the Kuv. The Klingons begin to militarise at the Gorn border, and the Empire also expels its non-Klingon residents from Kitama in 2385. A year later, amid constant skirmishes, the Klingons bombard Gila 6 and land troops two days later, seizing the territory from the Gorn. The Federation continues to try to placate the two sides. Of course in 2387 the Hobus event shakes things up, and the Narada under the command of Captain Nero rampages through the Alpha and Beta quadrants attacking all he considers responsible for the loss of Romulus. Martok assigns a task force under General Worf to intercept him, but his favouritism of Worf is used to weaken his position as many see Martok handing a Klingon fleet over to a Federation official and seeing it lost at his hands. Alongside this the Empire refuses to aid the Romulan refugee crisis. In 2389 Klingon attacks on the Gorn continue and with them capturing Gamma Orionis they also begin to expand into Romulan space, taking the Trename star and the Nequencia systems. The Federation begins to patrol the new borders to prevent further Klingon advancement while trying to provide succour to the Romulans. In 2390 the UFB offers to negotiate peace talks between the Klingons and the Gorn to try to halt the deteriorating relations, and as simply adding more starships to patrol the borders is going to just lead to more skirmishes. Klingons say that the Federation needs to withdraw its vessels from the Romulan Klingon border before they'll even accept and the Federation agrees. For the duration of the negotiations the Klingons halt their advance and defend their newly acquired territory. These actions culminate in the K7 peace talks in 2391, but peace talks are ruined by a bomb which injures Gorn Ambassador Zugozin. Tensions increase as Starfleet security bars the diplomats from leaving to find the culprit. A Klingon named Juda was found dead and evidence pointed to them as the culprit, but their killer was never found. The Klingons and Gorn resume their attacks, but while Chancellor Martok is occupied with these fronts, Chancellor Jumpok invades Zeta Pictoris of the Romulan Empire and is repelled by advanced Romulan ships. The Chos battle group is dispatched to investigate, and despite his defeat, Jumpok's aggressive actions have made him an appealing alternative to Martok's more reserved rule. New Federation president, the Saurian, Anak Okeg, manages to secure a new Gorn alliance peace talk and hosts them on Cestus III. During the second conference, the Gorn invade the Klingon world of Ogat three weeks in, and the talks are broken off. In 2393, Jumpok supposedly kills Martok and takes over as Chancellor, before banishing Worf from the Great Hall, and he declines to meet with Anik Okeg. In 2394, the Klingons begin to ally with the Orion Syndicate, which the UFP is appalled by, citing the organisation as criminal. The USS Kelso was destroyed in 2395 in the Deveron system when a prototype Federation cloaking device exploded. 
This outrages the Romulans who point to the outlawing of Starfleet cloaking devices as outlined in the Treaty of Olgaron. They also notify the Klingons and both powers withdraw many diplomats from the UFP. Gerod uncovers the Undine conspiracy. More on this can be found in the Undine video history I did as part of the STO series. Klingon Gorn operations continue over the next few years with assaults on the Aurelius systems, but in 2397 Jumpok finally acquiesces to a third round of Federation hosted peace talks on Casperia Prime. In 2398, the Klingon Empire refuses to partake in the Federation's dual citizenship movement, and the third peace talks fail from another attack, and Kumtok, the Klingon ambassador, dies from his wounds. The culprit is suspected to be Toral of House Duras, wanted by both the UFP and KDF, but he escapes. Before the talks can be continued, however, the IKS Kang returns to Kronos to meet with Captain Gerod, who has uncovered proof that the Gorn hegemony is under the sway of Species 8472, and begins to invade with a combined Klingon Orion Armada. This marks the full eruption of the Klingon Gorn War. Jabok asks the Federation for aid in protecting the Alpha Quadrant as negotiated in the Kitmer Accords, but instead, the UFP outcries against this seemingly extreme action and demands that the Empire return to negotiate. The Klingons pull out of the Kitmer Accords. The Klingons continue to refuse to meet the UFP representatives, and Starfleet deploys starships to protect its borders in case the fighting spills over. Outer Gorn colonies are soon lost to the Klingons, who are steadily advancing, but the Gorn are making them pay for every light year. In 2401, Captain Zachary McAllister attacks the Klingons to aid the Gorn, and the crew of the USS Lindbergh mutinied to remove him from command. In 2402, Gornar is blockaded by the Klingons, and a siege begins. The blockade lasts into the new year, with the Gorn transporter inhibitor network failing and the Klingons making landfall. Despite the Gorn hurrying to protect civilian sectors, the Klingons make no effort to slaughter the inhabitants and instead move straight to occupy the capital. The battle lasted 28 hours until the soldiers of the 5th Fleet managed to enter the royal palace. The Klingons agree not to harm any civilians and to not enforce martial law in exchange for the Gorn's surrender. Very restrained behaviour for a standard Imperial conquest. Chancellor Jumpok arrives to Gornar and executes leading Gorn officials after revealing that they were Undine. This broadcasts across the galaxy, and then he turns the hegemony into a vassal state of the Empire. Many other powers, such as the Norsicans, begin to see the Empire as vindicated and are tempted by a potential coalition. Bolstered by their successes, the Klingons lay claim to the Chromi Cluster in UFP space in 2404. On Stardate 82001.36, President Okeg refuses the Klingons' claims. He states, We will continue our explorations of the Cluster. We will not uproot Federation settlements that have been in these sectors for decades. You claim you have ancient claims to this region of space, I say that current possession counts for something. We do not want war, but we will defend ourselves. Three days after, in response, Corvat is invaded, marking the beginnings of the Third Klingon Federation War. It is not a strategic location, but a symbolic one, as the site of previous negotiations between these two powers. The USS Montgomery Scott is heavily damaged defending Corvat, but Starfleet efforts prevail. Initially, the Federation was weathering the attacks just fine, and Anik Okeg is re-elected. Sherman's planet is also targeted by the Gorn, and Station K-7 is moved to defend the sector. The Federation begins to give Admiral Droral Quinn greater control of Starfleet, and instigates a number of changes to wartime doctrine. In 2406, the Arcanist sector is sieged by Starfleet, bolstered by the deployment of new personal shielding technology. Alongside this, the Federation has to divert resources to deal with a plague in the Carnegie system, a major supplier for the Federation. 
Jinpok refuses peace summits in 2407, saying that during peace times the Empire withers and infighting takes hold, it's only in war that they thrive. Meanwhile, the plague continues to erupt in other systems, such as Phylos. In 2408, Cestus III is invaded by the Gorn Klingon forces, and Starfleet moves to defend its colony. In early 2409, the systems of Tosteg and several in the Cassay sector are attacked by the Gorn, and the USS Breakeven is used as bait to lure out Starfleet into a trap set by the IKS Trot. Soon after, Vega Colony is attacked by the Borg, marking the re-emergence of a threat long thought dealt with. Klingons invade and attempt to occupy the Pajem Monastery in order to intercept Federation Ambassador Soketh, claiming him to be an Undine imposter. Starfleet officers defend the Ambassador until it is revealed that the Klingons are correct, and the imposter makes his escape disguising himself as a Klingon. Starfleet intelligence continues to study the emerging evidence that Species 8472 has compromised the Federation. There are also strikes conducted on Klingon listening posts in the Lackey and Bomari systems to protect Starfleet communications. Cassay 4 is occupied by the Gorn, who say they have a territorial claim to the sector. This situation remains unresolved, but Federation research teams were safely rescued from occupying forces. Starfleet Intelligence then dispatches operatives to the Hiromi Cluster to investigate a Klingon base under the command of Ambassador Bavat. Leads Uncovered informs Starfleet Intelligence of a planet killer weapon that has been located and activated by the Klingons in an attempt to escalate and prolong the war in the Imaga system. While this was unfolding, operations in the Argalia Sector continue to try to halt the Gorn advance and the Federation tried to defend its territory, while Starbase 24 is raided. As of the many reworkings of Star Trek Online, I'm no longer sure of the canonicity of Miral Paris's kidnap at the hands of Bavat, so I'm not including that story arc here. However, the beginnings of the end of the war are on the horizon as of 2409, when the breakaway nation of the Romulan Republic under the skillful leadership of De Tun, manages to negotiate treaties with both the Federation and the Klingon Empire, placing it in a position to mediate and support both powers without risking attack from either. During this time, Starfleet is beginning to take the Undine infiltration of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants more seriously, and mounts an excursion into fluidic space to investigate the reason for their renewed aggression. A wary Klingon task group is assigned to accompany the effort to back up their claims that their war with the Gorn years earlier was about protecting the Quadrant. Attacks from the Borg also serve to unite the two powers temporarily, as whenever a cube shows up unannounced or an assimilation risks snowballing, the two old adversaries of Starfleet and the KDF often put aside their conflict to force the Borg back, both powers aware of the threat the Collective poses. This has the knock-on effect of reducing many hostilities from both parties, especially as the Romulan Republic stumbles upon Iconian technology on its homeworld and offers both powers a chance to join in its study. This serves to bolster the Republic's own standing among the local powers, and over the course of 2409 we see a gradual de-escalation of the conflict. This is compounded by the discovery of an advanced Dyson Sphere that yields troves of ancient but comparatively advanced technology which both sides take an interest in studying. For this purpose, a joint task force is established, and in this instance at least, hostilities have ceased between the two. This tenuous alliance threatens to break down, however, on the discovery that the Genolan Sphere has relocated to the Delta Quadrant and that a whole new region of space and sphere are up for grabs. All the powers lay claim to the sphere, and it becomes apparent that there needs to be a formal treaty put in place. To this end, the Genolan Summit is held to ascertain the truth of the Undine threat and the ownership of the Dyson Spheres. Most major powers attend and put forwards their agendas, 
but the negotiations are interrupted with an attack on the Sol system by Species 8472. When the true target of Kronos is revealed and the Federation moves to preserve the lives of those Klingons on the homeworld, the Klingon High Council reaches out to talk with the Federation and ratifies a formal alliance. Built on the Droid Command, the Kitama Accords and the united threat of the Iconians, who were revealed at the conference to be behind almost everything. This formally ended the Third Klingon Federation War, but began to bleed into an event known as the Iconian War. Collectively, historians would refer to the Gorn War, Third Klingon War and the Iconian War just as the Long War, as all of the events were interconnected. Thanks for watching this recap of the Klingon War. There are numerous encounters and smaller tales that crop up throughout the war, and many on both sides will have a hard time putting the events behind them, but in the face of a much greater threat, they'll have to. Until then, thanks for watching. I've been Rick, and until next time, goodbye.